Fanny O'Cole for that, how I pronounced it right, started her career in retail sales and management and transitioned into the education sector where she serves as the head of marketing, admissions, and communications at Bridge House um, College, Shikoi. In recent years, Sally has made a significant impact um, in the exciting field of edutech. <laughs> edtech. <laughs> she serves as a regional communications manager at Nexford University and a leading um, American-based online university where she plays a critical role in expanding the university's brand and presence in Nigeria. Sally is currently the community development manager at Nexford University, where she leads the development and execution of stakeholders' engagement events and partnerships in Nigeria. And we're really honored to have her with us in studio. Hi, Sally. Hi, thank you for having me here today. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to contribute to this topic. Yes. Sir. And it's one that's close to my heart. I can see you done that. I, I saw you nodding now. Both of them were talking. You are a marketing person, so I can imagine how you're saying, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. But okay, like literally, right? Um, yeah. I think it was our generation that got well, the millennials were the ones that got introduced into uh, um, technology like, yeah. and all of that. But we're seeing that, you know, I mean, there's a video. Is it is it a Google video now? I'm not sure. Of a baby in the delivery room. I don't know if you've seen that video. It's so it's so funny. I've watched it. Oh, the one that the baby comes out with. The baby comes out. Oh, he's here. <laughs> and collect the mother, I don't know. Well, they're caught, so he got his own. Well, I'm, I'm and like, oh, well, it's so, Yeah. He's been a phone call. This Zell tell me and all that. And like, yeah. And like, it might be, a, it might be funny. But but that's the that is the era we're yeah. in. Like literally everybody right now, mm -hmm. if you are not immersed in technology, yeah. you will truly become redundant, yeah. right? So how is it, first of all, how easy is it for people, right, to say, okay, you know what? I have done this career for, let's say, 20 years. What do I do next? You know, what should they be looking up for in terms of, okay, try to transition into a more digital native professional, right? So that you can be yeah. the relevant because that's the future. How easy is that one, number one? Number two, for people that are already in the space, mm -hmm. I feel like it's just too much. Like today I was online learning different things. <laughs> like you literally, literally, so is it not too much? You know, where do we say, okay, no, 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 I think I've, I've learned enough. Is there ever going to be that time? At this digital age, is, there what, is that going to happen? So maybe you start with the first question. Uh, okay, so I'll start with the first one. Um, you know, when people talk about how difficult it is to get into technology, I say the first thing you need to know is this. Don't resist it. Once you build that resistance, um, whether mentally or otherwise, you're going to have challenges. So the thing is this, embrace technology because with or without you, it's here to stay with or without you participating in it. That's the future. So just embrace the change and flow with it. Um, so yes, millennials didn't grow up with technology, but they adapted to technology and people might say, oh, but I'm past that age. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not too young to start learning stuff, but the whole nature of man is one of continuous learning. The day you stop learning is the day you die. Yes. So um, embrace technology. See it as another language you want to learn. That's how I'll put it. Um, it's not something to fight. It's not something to get scared of or get overwhelmed. Start taking it in little bits. You don't have to know anything, everything at once. You don't have to do everything at once. Start with taking very little bite-sized courses. Start with, you know, and then find out for you to really embrace technology, I'll say find out how you learn best. Mm. Do you like videos or do you prefer reading materials? Do you prefer listening? And that's the beauty of technology. All these mm -hmm. learning styles, styles are available. Mm. You're not limited, unlike the traditional experience where it's just you have to sit down and just get to listen to one person talk. So that's the beauty of technology. You can actually harness the power of technology to suit your own style. So the second question was, so for mm. people that are already in the system, right? Mm. How do you keep up and where do you draw the line? <laughs> but, like, literally, my sister just graduated from next world. Interesting. All right. Congratulations. Yeah. Ah. 
In fact, and I need to let me she body up. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know. And and the interesting thing is she said what? So I was talking to her today. I said, Faith, there's just so one call. You know, say you say you want to do AI one to one thing. Yeah. Then I said, do like this. <laughs> On nearly too many things. That's my brain. Yeah, like literally she's oh and yeah. She is she's not someone that is she loves the she, says, she loves she's she's been you know the who they call it learn. <laughs> so she loves to learn new right. Right. Well now what she's done like in recent time, I think for three or four years now, she's been intentional about absolutely herself from what's it called, just being hardcore and learner. And who now a digital professional, professional in her field. She's in the finance space, right? So she's so taking from these courses, the Nibre, she's doing, she's done that, that, and I need that, that. She's, so she's doing everything she feels like this will be the thing that would now eventually now put me here. Yeah. So that she in the positions and the future. But I feel sometimes like it can be overwhelming. Like, do you li- really need your, but you know you cannot pay somebody <laughs> to draw the line. For your, it's what you're saying, it's one line lady. <laughs> Um, but so, tell me how to manage it, though. So I, I think what you should do here is not. So sometimes when you look at a problem, you see it, you want to look at everything at once. When you do that, you're going to get discouraged. Narrow your vision. Focus is important. What your sister did is fantastic. She honed in on um, her, her experience and she said, look, I want to go further in this experience and become a digital native at least and it. So, but you know, if you're trying to do everything at once, you're hearing people talk about UI, UX, you're hearing coding, you're hearing this and, you know, um, digital marketing, software development, you have to, you have to know yourself and, and then tell yourself which of these areas, where do you want to fit in? Because you have to find your niche. You can't be everywhere, right? So that, that's the first thing to do. So it doesn't overwhelm you. And then take it in bite size courses. Just take, try taking one course at a time. And, you know, yes, that's what we sell. But the way we go about it, we also try not to overwhelm you. Pre- pace yourself and do not compare yourself. Technology has made it so easy that you, you, you are literally in competition with yourself and not with the next person. So don't um, try to do everything at once and don't listen to the marketplace. Ah, you know what? Hold that. Let's just go, on let's just go on that out and be right back because let's go out. Oh, oh. Good morning. All right, so if you just if you're just doing then uh becoming a digital native professional in the era of um, digital transformation, that's the conversation we're having. And we have Sally with us. Yeah, we're already having fun. Um so you, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 1803-4663. So uh, please, people should follow me. You see that marketing place <laughs> for when I do break. Yeah. Because now every time I see a lot of people going to like global standards, so they are yeah. comparing based on okay. Project managers have been paid everywhere. Exactly. Business developers have been paid this. So people now are learning based on, on. earnings. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Um, so uh, it depends on what kind of person you are. And that's why I say do not listen to the noise in the marketplace. If you leave your house, um, let's say you want to buy groceries, and you leave your house and go to the market and hear somebody shouting, selling clothes, are you going to abandon the groceries you wanted to buy to go for clothes? That's the sign of an undecided mind. So you need to filter out the noise and find out wh- where you want to go. So the, 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 the first thing in going anywhere is to know where exactly you want to go and being focused on that journey. But if you just have, if you wake up and you say, oh, I want to go to Suriliri, where is Suriliri? Oh, I don't know. It means that you're going to end up anywhere in Suriliri. But if you say, oh, I want to go to Adenro Ngunsoya, you have a destination in mind. You use your map to tell you how to get there. And that's how you should embrace, that's how you should figure out your digital path. Mm-hmm. Think of where you want to be. Don't look at, yeah, I don't think you should. Yes, it's good to know what salaries are saying in the industry. 
But are you cut out to be a data analyst? Mm -hmm. Do you have a love for figures? Mm -hmm. You can be a creative. Not everybody has to be um, a coder. Not everybody has to be a software developer. Even though the salaries are very attractive. Or who says creatives are not making money with technology? Mm. They're making a lot of money as well. So just research, do your research, find out what works best and what aligns with your goals and then your method of learning and stick to that. Absolutely. You would always evolve, of course, because technology is evolving, mm -hmm. but at least you have a, you have a, a map, a roadmap. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So talking about... Sorry, talking about learning, right? Um, yeah. How can a person foster a culture of continuous learning, especially when you're a certain CEO um, of technology and how it's constantly changing? Yeah. Okay, um, that's a very good question. Um, at next word, we don't call uh, we don't call them students. We call them learners, and that's because we believe learning is lifelong; it never stops. If you call yourself a student, at some point, you're going to stop being a student. Mm. But if you're a learner, you're going to keep learning. So the thing is this, you, um, you know, you have to prioritize your learning. What do you want to learn? How? When? Give yourself a goal. Oh, I want to become X, Y, Z. How long does it take? How long is the average time it takes to reach that goal? Okay. Maybe I have this other commitment. I'm going to set this target for myself. If other people are doing it in three months, maybe I will take four or five months to do it. But at the end, I'm going to get to where I'm going to. So that's how you should approach it, right? And that's why you have to choose a model that is flexible for you, a model that works for you, that is not necessarily a competitive model where everybody has to do everything at the same time. Amen. Um, 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 my question would be, okay, you know, you said a, a, a bit about next mm. Who are your target audience? Okay, and the courses that you well, if someone wants to just you just come out of uni, yeah, and you're looking for how to upgrade yourself because you're not sure where w what part you want to take, but you want to be, you know, digitally, you know, savvy. savvy yeah. That's the word. Where do you start from? First of all, who are your target audience? Okay. Then as an individual who is just starting out, where do you start from? What kind of courses do you start with? Wait. How do you, you know, some people are doing, you know, pro, uh, product management, project management, business analysts, data analysis. Where do you start from? Where's the best place advisable to start from so that you don't jump into something that you're not, you're, you're ready for. Yeah, you're not ready for on the other side because there's the, you know, there's the theory part and there's the practical. Like you were saying, if you don't like numbers, why do a data analysis just for the money? Because eventually you get tired of it and then there will be no further learning from that. Okay. Um, so to answer your first question, who are our target audience? So our target audience are young to, you know, any age, <laughs> as long as you're willing to learn, um, Nigerians, I'm using this in the Nigerian context now, who, um, you know, they're, 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 they're bold. They want to take a different path. They are ambitious as well. So these are people who are, let's say, between the ages of 18 mm. to any age um, that, you know, we, we don't set a cap on learning. Yeah. That's up to you. So... Um, whoever is interested that has that skills. Now I'm talking about where do you start from? That's the beauty of Nextford. You finish from secondary school, you want to do a bachelor's degree with Nextford. We're not just going to throw you into the deep waters. Get this. So that there's a, a course with our undergraduate classes called the Science of Happiness. Would you ever think you would find a course like that related to business and technology? You know, the traditional experience, you'd not do something like that. Well, we've got something like that next for because we want to prepare your mind. We want to prepare you for the journey. And when our undergraduates take this course, the feedback I've gotten from them is really interesting. You know, it opens their mind, it opens their heart. So it prepares them for whatever else is coming along the way because you need to figure out your internal state and you need to get mentally prepared for the journey. 
So that's one thing you start with. So you're not just going off the deep end or you're just graduating from high school and then we throw you into uh, product management. Again, um, uh, tech courses are tied to uh, business courses. So you would start gradually. You'd pick up the pace um, as time goes on. You're going to start with things that are familiar to you. You're not just going to just get thrown into the deep end and then you're struggling. You have no idea on the first day what's happening. You know, that's not um, how it's done. Okay. So do, do this, sorry, do this, um, the classes, Yeah. do these, can they uh, be like, uh, are they a replacement or will I say a substitute mm -hmm. for um, the courses that you study in Nigerian universities? Or is looked at from a higher learning, yes, or you look elementary or is something that you, you can, you, you can actually like the first, they are the worst absolutely standalone courses. Oh, okay. So l l let me explain our model to you. Um, w we were built on a course of, okay, traditional education hasn't changed in the past hundred years. Yeah. But the workplace has changed so drastically. Now education is lagging behind the workplace. And that's why we get employers saying, oh, they have so many graduates, but they cannot employ them unemployed. they're unemployable yeah. so that's a huge challenge and that was the challenge we set out to tackle from the beginning so our curriculum the entire curriculum was built from an industry perspective mm -hmm. we spoke to 5600 top employers from around the world mm -hmm. to find out what skills were in demand what skills were in shortage what skills did they wish that people that were fresh from school had and then we built all this into our learning so next part um, programs are, it's a full degree. And anyone who has undergone a course at next Oh, way, she's starting to get This question would not come up. Exactly, it wouldn't come up. Please do. My name is Pajoli Yeah, so I'm glad you said we're talking about skills because I'm bringing me okay. I'm bringing into my next um, question, right? All right. So what are the skills well, that one of the is is, um, <clears throat> One needs to acquire or enhance in order to try in this era or space that we're what, in. Color. What, are, what are the employers? Those families, yeah. like with Dr. Mom, yeah. 600. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so there, 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 it's a mixture of both soft skills and hard skills. And on the soft skills side, the common one we hear them say is effective communications. Mm. You'll be surprised how much that is a challenge. Um, for graduates, people think they communicate well until, you know, it turns out they don't. So communication skills is a top, is top priority. Problem solving skills and critical thinking. These are very essential skills for you to thrive in the workplace because it means that you come ready to be able to adapt. And to also contribute. To add value, yeah. exactly. To add value. Because a lot of people go into employment waiting to just receive With salaries at the end exactly. of the month. Exactly. Without any value you add. No value adding, yeah, how to get yeah. back. Yeah. Well, hey. Exactly. If, if you have critical thinking skills, you'll mm -hmm. be able to figure out how your role impacts the entire organization. Absolutely. And once you're cognizant of that fact, you do better. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So, but if you don't understand how your role contributes, you, there's a strategy and you feel, oh, that's, that's the um, end. So it yeah. doesn't concern me, you know, I'm just a receptionist. I don't know what's going on there. So th that's really where, so problem solving and critical thinking skills are very important. Also, how do you problem solve? There's an issue. Do you only just escalate it, you know, without figuring it out? So these are critical soft skills. Now for the hard skills, we now come to things like, you know, um, being able to analyze data, being able to use data in your work, um, being, uh, being able to um, present information in a way that is concise, that is, um, you know, that, that is clear, exactly. Without, thank you, that's the word, <laughs> bullseye, you know, without, without um, bringing fatigue to whoever has to digest yeah. your information. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it's it's a mixture of both um, soft and hard skills. So I know I'm sure Sunny, you had something in mind that you wanted to see <laughs> when you were coming <laughs> driving all the way to this um, to this studio when the topic of course yeah. raised and you know what was that one thing you wanted to leave in the minds of people? Um, why is it important for you to become a professional native 
um, what's it called, digital native. Why is it important? Because <laughs> the world is, <laughs> in fact, the things that I learned, interesting thing is I've done project management in 2012. Okay. But yeah, project management in 2012. What I'm reading now is completely the flow of parts. Yeah. But if I go back to my university where I studied physics, yes, I studied physics, yes. and I go back and go and start from one level, I can bet you is what I learned in in, in 2001 but, and that I'm still be there. <laughs> is what I will still go and meet there. Um, so the digital space is very different. It's fine. Very, very different. Mm -hmm. So what did you have in mind? You know, see, you know what, if I don't say anything, this I will leave with the mind of anybody that is watching. Mm -hmm. So they understand how critical. Because you can't just wake up. You see the book, Who Moved My Cheese, see, right? Yeah. The, the mouse was talking, talking, talking. This was changing in around him. But he refused to change things. Yeah. Now I woke up in the morning and thought, <laughs> I, I, you did it, Jesus. You forgot. You've been going, but you refuse to see. Yeah. And that's what is happening in the digital world, well, right? You know, in a lot of transformation is happening. Do you understand? Things that you never considered to be to be relevant. That's that somebody can decide how to reconstruct this as you understand and say, you know what? Let's move this light here. <laughs> it's a skill now that people are now taking and you know earning. So, if you had that one thing to say to someone, yeah. of the importance of just change, whatever it is that, and you can become a, 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 a digital native in any field, field that you're in. What would be that thing you say to that person? Okay, um, what I would say goes back to my first sentence. Embrace the change. With or without you, it's going to happen. So to avoid being a dinosaur, you just have to embrace that change and harness the potential. So the thing is, people say it as, Oh, technology for work, but if my current job doesn't require technology, why am I bothered? But th there's, a, the, you know, we, we've done lots of studies on this because we're very focused on preparing our graduates for the future of work, mm. not about yesterday's job or today's job, what's going to be relevant, relevant in the next five to 10 years. And it's interesting how a lot of things have come up, the kind of, you know, things that will be phased out. So if you do not get yourself ready for that, you're going to like the mouse, like you said, you know, things are already happening. They're in motion, whether you can see them or not. But if you don't get yourself into that space, then you're going to find yourself becoming redundant. So I would say look at technology from a place of empowering yourself for both personal and professional development. Mm. You can use it, embrace it in your daily life. Start with the personal development, you know, before you even go into professional development. And then it becomes easier as you go with time. So the one thing I want to say is this, please, it's absolutely important that we become digitally fluent mm. in order not to get left behind. Yeah. And that, who have come? <laughs> well, she has said it all. She has said it. You don't want to be left behind. It is 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 scary. Um, so my son recently graduated from secondary school, and before they graduated, I had told them, "Say, Miss, I use calculation." <laughs> I said, "I have good basic salary, baseline salary for you guys in the diners. <laughs> Me in a salary, in a marketplace." <laughs> but because I know that they have the capacity, let's say, yeah. holding and all the stuff, because they are very, very, you know, very like, yeah. driven in that mm -hmm. terms of technology. And, you know, every day I'm so happy that I forced them to do it because now they are studying, you know, courses online and, you know, preparing for the university. And, you know, so yeah. you're going into the university is different. You're going to be different from your classmates that are just going fresh from, you know, because now you have a skill, Hell. right? So now imagine, you know, if we, as even as adults, because there's literally no field, right now no, yeah. even if it is hair salon mm -hmm. yeah do you know how many trichologists are collecting making i ran away mm -hmm. i had to meet a trichologist i said this is my front i just got the head to, to come out <laughs> i'm not by then they did the analysis they did the whatever blood impression did the scanning five thousand dollars yeah i say you say what <laughs> you know but literally there is no single i i went that basic yeah you understand even if it has your nails, nails. 
the, yep. the technology that has made nail whatever Fast. different. Yep. And not only that, you will not earn bigger income because you adopted that technology. Yep. And Do you understand? Yeah. So my question, my final question would be to you. Mm. You know, how can we, because I've seen your courses, they're a bit limited, right? Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll get to that point. Why I say it's a bit limiting in my head. Because literally what I just said now, mm. the every field yeah. requires technology. Absolutely. So how can we adopt more um, technological solutions, mm. like in bite side courses that can cater? So if, for instance, I have a stylist, mm. I say, come, come, come. There's this course that these people are offering. Go and take it. Are you people looking into like that kind of massive expansion? Yeah. Um, so absolutely. Um, at, at the core of what we do is innovation at Next Forge University. So we're always innovating and iterating with the marketplace, and which is why we recently launched our master's in digital transformation. Yeah. Um, so we keep um, evolving. We keep trying to find out what skills will be needed and we keep building our courses and that's a huge advantage for us. Um, so I would not say we're limited because um, a traditional university, for example, would need to invest thousands of millions of naira or thousands of dollars to change in their library. Mm -hmm. And that's why you find out if you go back to your university, you the same library, still the same. it's expensive. Exactly, to change. Mm. But with our online courses, can update it. we can update it faster, than, you know, as fast as you can think of. So that means that as you're learning, you are confident that you are getting the latest. Mm. So um, digital transformation is a key aspect for us. And we know that, yes, that's all encompassing. So it's so broad. broad. It's very broad. It's not something that is limiting. I mean, just Limit today, any I was reading about this Nigerian company, this, um, you know, some ladies that decided to, you talked about hair. Mm -hmm. They want to make a lab made human hair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, oh, that's awesome, you know, because that, that's a huge area, you know, for, yeah, for me. They will not be cutting people's hair in <laughs> more temporary <laughs> India anymore. <laughs> exactly. So, yes. Okay. Technology. So, digital transformation covers that entire, all, I am, all, all these sectors I'm talking about. So, if you think digital transformation, yeah. you know, because again, this like ties back to what Andy had asked about yeah. ideas, with, yeah. you know. All right. Okay. So, I think, do um, you have comments? Okay, I thought we—I thought I heard something. But we've out of we've run out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Sally. We had fun with you. Thank you, you and I did too. Thank you very much. All right. So before we go, go and learn a course today. 